Peace, family. Welcome back to the Revolutionary Wealth Builders channel, where we seek to bring wealth education to the people. Um, my name is Emmett, and I woke up this morning, and let's just say I, I have something on my mind, and I felt like this was the perfect time to have this discussion. It appears that everybody is up in arms regarding the George Floyd situation. And I felt like this was a perfect time to have the conversation regarding revolutionary wealth building and how there is a correlation between how we spend our money and who we spend it with and how we empower those people to um, use oppressive instruments against us. So, I mean, let's get right into it. So the reason why we designed this YouTube page and titled it the Revolutionary Wealth Builders Channel is very simple. And I want to read a, a definition to what we believe revolutionary wealth building um, actually represents. It is the process by which individuals or groups position themselves to accumulate tangible wealth using strategies specifically designed to neutralize the oppressive instruments of systemic and institutional racism and elitism. And that's very important because while a lot of us, we believe that making money and building wealth is to be used for our entertainment, that is completely and unequivocally incorrect. That is not why we should be building wealth. We should be building wealth to accumulate and accumulate power, to accumulate power and to liberate ourselves so we are not oppressed by systems who use our spending power against us. We spend too much money with people who oppress us, and we spend it at the wrong times in the wrong places. And we're, we've been doing this consistently for hundreds of years. Revolutionary wealth building is exactly what it sounds like. And I think sometimes we, we, we glaze over and gloss over titles, but this is not something to be taken lightly. Revolutionary wealth building, we are doing this to build power to protect our people, our families, and our communities. You can't do anything in America without political power, economic power, and cultural power. Without those things, you can't do anything. The first thing you have to do is build a powerful economic platform, meaning spending your money with the right people, accumulating wealth, and not squandering your wealth and the, and the, and the sweat equity that you invest into building your wealth. When you go out and work for 40 hours a week and you turn around and squander that wealth and that investment capital on buying things that will melt or that will um, perish over time, what you essentially are doing is you are wasting your time and you are giving other people the license and the power to control your life. Building wealth is, is more than just making money and acquiring things to have fun and go on vacations and make sure your children are straight. It is a shield and a sword, and it is a defense mechanism against those who seek to oppress you, keep you oppressed and impoverished so they can benefit from your oppression. And you have to understand this. So what am I saying? I'm saying that every time we squander a dollar and we misappropriate finances and funds and wealth, we are giving someone else the power to oppress us and control us. That's it, And it's that simple. It is important that we understand that our purchasing power is power. Our wealth is power. And we give that power away every single day. We can no longer afford to do that. The power that we give away to others they use that power and stored energy to turn around and continuously oppress a group and population of people that they need to remain oppressed in order for them to benefit. Their wealth, more often than not, has a strong correlation with our oppression or our inability to acquire wealth. Wealth building and economics is a zero-sum game. In order for somebody to win, somebody has to lose. And, and by and by all the all accounts, we are the losers, economically, politically, socially, and culturally. 
And the only way that changes if we understand is, is if we can understand the correlation between who we spend our money with, how we spend our money, how we accumulate investment capital, what we invested in, and how we accumulate our wealth and how we protect it. So when we need to unleash those dollars, that currency or the wealth, when we want to unleash it to protect ourselves, to, to sit down and negotiate or renegotiate or to support the individual that will speak on our behalf and put that person in office, we have those things to do so. Other cultures have no problem with spending and building wealth and then investing that wealth into building schools. While we buy cognac, pop, soda, cigarettes, drugs, cars that depreciate in value, fast food, we purchase um, designer clothing, we invest in, in um, fashion, and then when we think we have made it, we get a mortgage or we get a car note or we send our children to a college and pay for them to go to college when they don't even understand what they are going to college to do. The credit card debt, the debt is what keeps you enslaved. The auto loan debt is what keeps you enslaved. The mortgage loan debt is what keeps you enslaved. The student loan debt is what keeps you enslaved. And as long as you are in debt, you are a debt slave and you are bound by the laws of having to go to work for someone else and never be able to establish the true wealth, revolutionary wealth and liberation and freedom that you would need to speak out against oppressive instruments, speak out against oppressive groups, speak out against oppression in and of itself and be able to stand up and defend what you know to be right and demand fair and equitable treatment across all social lines and platforms. You can't do that without power. And wealth building begins that process. This is not a game. You can't afford to spend money the way you want to spend money. You have to spend it the way it would it will benefit not just you and not just your children, but your people. If you don't understand the correlation between George Floyd being killed Ahmaud Arbery being killed and how we wastefully spend money, then you have to go back and reevaluate your entire existence here in America. If you can't understand that, the reason why oppressive systems and the instruments of those systems are able to kill black men and black women and black children without being held accountable and understanding that that is a power play and that we don't possess the power to combat that, we can protest all we want. We can cry him and haw on social media all we want. But until we establish and accumulate and acquire the power necessary to combat these systems and these instruments of oppression, then all we will do is complain on social media and all we will do is protest peacefully with no other recourse. Ahmad Aubrey, while he may have been killed by one, one semi-civilian and one civilian, the fact that they were not brought to justice and arrested immediately complete tells you and demonstrates clearly to you how they value you, how they feel about you. And it is important that you not care how they feel about you and value you, but you have to care about yourself and value yourself enough to use your hard-earned dollars that you work for every day and the wealth that you build and the investment capital that you build to build a protective barrier around yourself, your family, and your community. If you don't do that, then essentially what you are doing is you are okaying, you are giving them the okay to continue to kill your brothers, to harm, hurt, harm, and maim your children, and continue to push forward with an oppressive agenda against you and your people. Revolutionary wealth building is exactly what it sounds like. You are building wealth in a manner that is revolutionary to the thinking and the mind of poor and impoverished people all over the world. It is time for you to like, share, and subscribe this because there is no way that a channel that will speak on your behalf in this manner should only have uh, under 150 subscribers. We should immediately 
had by the end of 2020 have over 100,000 subscribers. Why? Because there are hundreds of thousands of people in America who are oppressed socially, economically, politically, and culturally every single day. And you need a voice and you need a platform to express yourself and you need someone to speak on your behalf to share your views, your hurts, your pains. And it is this is the opportune time because we are now all up in arms and in our feelings reactively. But proactively, we should be doing something different immediately be beyond George Floyd, beyond Ahmaud Aubrey, we have the Tamir Rices and we have the Sandra Blands. This has been going on for hundreds of years. And that is because we've given people the power to do these things. And we have to take back that power. And I'm going to end this video um, on a quote by Kwame Toure. And I'm paraphrasing. He says that if, if, or if someone wants to lynch me, then that is their problem. But if they have the power to lynch me, then that is my problem. Racism is not about attitude. Racism is a matter of power. And we need to understand that. And until you understand that, you we will continue to be the victims of oppression and, of, and victims by the instruments of those oppression by way of um, misguided law enforcement behavior, um, racist attacks, racist acts, and all the other things that do psychological, spiritual, and physical damage to poor and impoverished people. Revolutionary wealth builders, like, share, and subscribe today. It is absolutely imperative that you do so. Peace and love, and like, share, and subscribe. This channel is to bring wealth education to the people, but we first must understand the correlation between building wealth and power and the, the correlation between that and the oppressive instruments that we have been giving our power to for many, many years by way of who we spend with, how we spend, and when we spend. Peace and love, and stay, stay empowered.